I wrote them a letter and told them what I wanted to do. And, uh, and I think, uh, my letter hopefully portrayed how passionate I am about this place and, and, and how passionate I, uh, they, they are about this place. And, and they, they wrote me a check and bought all of our drums and it was just like a dream come true. Welcome to another episode of the Bears Den Podcast, where we highlight the journey of how cubs become bears. My name is Ella. And I'm Annie. You might notice a little something different about this episode. We've switched hosts. That's right. The podcast team wanted to make sure that different voices had the opportunity to take part in hosting the Bears Den Podcast. SGSH is a diverse community, and we wanted to make sure that that was represented in our podcast. Gabby and Tristan had the chance to host the first two episodes, so now Ella and I will be hosting the next two. We are very, very excited to dive into our episode, so let's begin. Today's guest has set the bar on what it means to bleed green and gold. He was a student at SJSH from 1998 to 2003, where he honed in on his passion for music and eventually graduated from SJSH to study music at the post-secondary level. He returned to SJSH as a teacher in 2008. It is because of his love for this school and its community that he focused his, his efforts on creating opportunities for students to explore their love for music. You may know him as that serious band conductor, though not to be taken too seriously with his flashy green and gold suit and matching ball cap. He is my personal favorite ginger, and he created SJSH's very own marching band that you can see performing at our school's football games, Toronto and North Bay Santa Claus parades, North Bay Battalion Games, as well as the Santa Claus Parade, or as well as the Candles Wonderland Parade. He also started the musical theater production with this year's performance of Legally Blonde, which was a huge success within the North Bay community. Additionally, you can see his concert band and jazz band perform throughout the school year at the Christmas concert, Kiwanis Festival, and In Sights and Sounds. We are absolutely excited for this episode as we welcome our third guest to the Bears Den podcast, Mr. Mr. Overholt. Overholt. Whoa, what an intro. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm very excited to be here. Super excited to have you. How are we doing today? Feeling good. I feel really good. Uh, the suit uh, still fits. And uh, and I'm excited to uh, to talk about uh, my favorite place. Yeah. yeah. So I guess get us started. How would you describe yourself? Uh, first, uh, at this point in life, I am a father and I am a husband. Uh, and uh, third on the list is I am a bear, and uh, I am uh, yeah. I am just a very proud, uh, very proud bear. Hundred percent. I think we can all agree, our viewers and us as students, very proud bears and. I gotta say, I admire your continued pride in our school. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, I uh, I appreciate that, and uh, I think it's it's really important uh, that we are passionate. And uh, I just consider myself very fortunate uh, to be able to uh, to teach and work uh, at a place that I that I love so much, and and uh, can carry on uh, our traditions. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so to get started. Talk to us about your music and following your passions. Was it always a part of your life growing up? Was it, what made you want to start it, study at university? Yeah, you know what, for, for music, for me, uh, I, I can, uh, can say that, honestly, since I was a, a young uh, child, I, I absolutely loved music. I was always uh, singing and dancing around the house. Um, there are uh, home videos of me, you know, holding up sheet music for my brother uh, as he played violin. And I thought he was just the best uh, violinist in the world. As I uh, as I watch back the videos now, it's completely untrue. Uh, <laughs> it was it's pretty painful to listen to now. Uh, but always, always uh, love music. Um, my parents uh, from a young age would always play records for us. Um, we had uh, babysitters that would let us stay up late and listen to records. And uh, I'm glad that I kind of caught the tail end uh, of the vinyl, the real vinyl era. Mm -hmm. And then um, moving forward in life. Um, my uh, my family had a very positive influence on me for music. Um, we would always mix cassette tapes. Um, 
a lot of friends would, you know, listen to the radio, record from the radio. But um, my brother always purchased a lot of cassette tapes that we would make mixtapes from uh, to have on our Walkmans uh, for different trips and that kind of stuff. Um, and then as time went on, I just, uh, I really wanted to be up on what was cool with music. And, uh, I'm not sure if you guys ever heard of something called Columbia house, Columbia house, um, was a, a kind of a scam, uh, but <laughs> it was a way for, um, people to buy, um, and ship CDs to their homes. Uh, originally it was records and tapes. And, and by the time it got to me, it was, it was CDs. And again, my brother, Andrew, uh, who's a great musician, my sister, Mary, they're both great musicians. Uh, and Andrew would, uh, order CDs from Columbia house and they'd have deals like 10 CDs for a penny. And, uh, he was very responsible. Um, but a lot of people actually got caught in the 10 CDs for a penny thing. Cause if you got the, t the 10 for a penny, you had to keep ordering every month and they wouldn't order. And then like, I know friends that had credit issues later in life because of Columbia house. Uh, so it's kind of a funny story there, but, uh, he always had all kinds of music and all kinds of music from different eras he would bring into our house. Uh, and so I got to really learn a lot of different, uh, different artists, different genres of music. Um, I'm eternally grateful to, to him and, and my sister just for having music playing in the home all the time and, and loving those songs. Uh, he took uh, guitar lessons uh, from a younger age. And so I wanted to be like him and I wanted to be like a rock star. And so I started taking guitar lessons um, and I didn't like it because I, I really wanted to play songs by the Beatles. And, and there was a big Beatles um, resurgence in like 1995, 96. I was in grade six and I was like, I want to try these things. And I got to lessons and my teacher was like, no, no, you have to learn the basics. And I didn't have the patience or the... I'd say the work ethic then to, to really um, understand the time that it takes to put in to get to that level. Uh, so I played for about half a year. And then the next year, uh, my neighbor uh, was taking saxophone lessons down the street from a guy that uh, Chip Keen is he's still in town. Actually, he runs a, the dog obedience school, uh, but he taught me saxophone lessons uh, starting in grade seven. And um, that's where I really got into it. And uh, I remember um, that's where I learned to read music, um, but, uh, different jazz camps, uh, run by some studios in town in the summertime. I learned how to improvise and, uh, really got into it. And then, uh, I watched the movie, that thing you do with Tom Hanks. And, uh, and that's when I wanted to become a drummer because the lead in that, in that, uh, role, um, he, he was a drummer and I had, I had a paper route for the North Bay Nugget and I saved, um, some money and I bought a drum set. Uh, from uh, a guy named Tim Clark's brother. Um, and uh, anyway, it just, uh, it became a thing that I just started playing drums. And um, as I as I go on in my musical journey, I, I would say that there was a different scene in North Bay when I was in high school. And there were lots of people that played in their own kind of garage style bands. Um, and they'd play at different uh, local shows um, here at SJSH. Uh, we had Rock Fest, which was a really cool thing. And a lot of different... Uh, um, bands would play that. Mr. White would always organize all the uh, sound and lighting and pyrotechnics for those shows. He really he would, he would fire off um, flames and that kind of stuff. And bands from all over town would come and play. Uh, I think it would be difficult now to put that together, just as the nature of of the music scene has changed. Um, and then, yeah, so then I, I got to, to high school and my siblings, Andrew and Mary, were both in high school when I was in grade nine. And um, and I just joined every possible music ensemble that we had. Uh, the string ensemble, I played upright bass. Uh, jazz band, I played saxophone and or drums and then saxophone and or drums and concert band as well. Uh, and then whenever I could, friends of mine, um, we, would, uh, we would jam on weekends. And so uh, whoever kind of housed the drum set with other host or um, my friend uh, Josh King's brother um, had a drum set at his house. And so uh, my friend Jim Close and I, we'd go to Josh's house and, uh, and we'd, uh, we'd practice there. And so it just ends up being, um, we're always kind of around music and immersed in music. And uh, yeah, I just, uh, it, it got me pumped for it. And then um, I, I think, you know, I, I will tell you that <laughs> with confidence that right now, uh, there's a song in my head. There's always a song playing in my head. And it's probably, I guess, at times debilitating because I have a hard time listening to people because I have to tune, really tune out an internal radio that plays. Um, but it also makes for a good time a lot, you know, because yeah. yeah, I have something going on uh, in my head. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of, that's my uh, kind of brief uh, 
Uh, did you mention? Yeah. So then when I got here at SJSH as a teacher, um, I guess before before that, uh, I, I really wanted to teach music. Mr. Neil Kennedy was my teacher here. Uh, you might know him. He, uh, he played clarinet uh, and flute and saxophone in our musical theater productions. So this year, Legally Blonde. But right. most of we, all of our shows, we always get Mr. Kennedy to play because uh, he's an excellent musician and, um, and works really hard to get his parts. And, and so he was very inspirational to me um, to become a music teacher. Uh, and I, I wanted to uh, only ever teach here. I only ever wanted to, if I was going to be a teacher, I was going to be here. Um, and I, um, I took uh, music courses uh, in university um, to be qualified to teach music. And um, after um, I graduated from university, Mr. Kennedy had retired. And I applied for uh, to teach here, and I was very lucky um, to 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 be hired as a music teacher. Um, yeah, so I uh, I just uh, I was super pumped to be back here and um, and kind of carry on the carry the torch. Bears, do you know how to read and write? Well, you better because the OSSLT is coming up. Choose a date between April fifteenth and twenty third. For more information, check SB or visit the SJSH website. Tell us what it was like returning to SJSH as a teacher and becoming the music teacher. Yeah. Uh, so when I came back here, um, I had done a couple of placements here during teachers college. Um, so I had kind of relearned some of the, some of the um, younger siblings of, of friends of mine that were in high school with me. Uh, yeah. So I had gone like basically five years from being a student and then I was a, a teacher right after that. Uh, the summers in between fourth year and teacher's college, I was a um, summer sales representative for a beer company. So it was a bit of a different lifestyle um, coming from from uh, from that uh, yeah, back into school. Um, but very welcoming. Everyone, when I came back, it was it was strange. I remember calling, um, he's retired now, but a good friend of mine, Mr. Silveri. Um, and I walked in and I said, hey, Mr. Silveri. And he looked at me because I was an adult uh, at that point, And he said, is my dad here? You know, he was, in, you know, kind of in, you know, insulted that I called him that. Um, other teachers I had, Mr. Doyle, uh, if I see Mr. Doyle and I don't call him Mike, uh, I, he will actually, like, he, he pushes me or, or hits me, like, in, in a joking way, but it kind of hurts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, Mr. Soveri, too, like, you know, he's like, call me Rob. And, and I, so, yeah, it was, it was definitely strange coming back, but very rewarding in the sense that um, I saw – the human side and, and, and developed a lot of friendships and relationships with, with, uh, people that work here. And it's been very, uh, yeah, just very rewarding. Um, and I felt, um, I felt definitely like the rookie for a lot of years. There weren't a lot of staff that were my age at the time. Um, and I really appreciate, uh, being taken under the wing of a lot of the staff here. Um, some of the older guys that uh, were here, uh, Mr. Wittet and, uh, Mr. Dunn, and Mr. Machevsky, and Mr. Houghton, um, they all, um, a lot of them work out of the co-op office and, uh, that became, became, became a hub of, um, of passionate people that really love this place. And, um, they would invite me to things like fishing weekends, uh, and, um, to, you know, lunches and, and all that kind of stuff. And it was just a, a nice way, um, to connect with family members of mine that were kind of their age because a lot of them are close to 20 years older than I am. So it was strange, but, uh, you know, hearing their stories and learning, some other history uh, about this, the staff and about the school and uh, just very rich uh, and hilarious and, uh, and inspiring and motivating stories. And, and, uh, and also just, um, you know, learning uh, that I wasn't the only one that was passionate to be, to be a bear. It's interesting to hear you say that too, because like now I know here, I hear people talking about you all the time as one of the faces of Scholard Hall. So to think that you had that, up and coming young new teacher even though now you're like the mr overholt everyone knows who you are outside of right. the school even that's very nice thank you for saying that yeah. uh, and uh yeah i appreciate that I, I, that's what i always wanted to be uh, uh and uh i i think that um you know the generations like my uh a, a great uncle of mine by marriage um lauren divine went to scholar hall way back when um and uh and and he uh he moved to toronto and then my grandparents on my mom's side moved from toronto here uh and so my mom my mom went and her sisters and, and there was four of them um they all went to saint joe's girls college and um 
my dad went to Scholar Hall and he lives in North Bay, uh, but he tells stories about his mom and my grandma still making him come to study hall every night here. Uh, lived down in the Ferris area and and had to come here for study hall and, and really good stories about um, all the guys here. It was a very small school. At Scholar Hall was not was not a uh, huge enrollment. Uh, after grade uh, 10, you had to pay tuition. Uh, so it was, it was full funding until grade 10, then they had to pay tuition. So um, there were a lot of students that, that lived in the old building where the board office is now um, and uh, and from other places. And, and they just, you know, imagine being, you know, sent from home in grade nine and, and living somewhere else. And same with the girls' college as well, St. Joe's Girls' College. Um, my mom and her sisters have lots of friends that um, came to North Bay for those years and, and then moved back home. Uh, and so the gentleman that I mentioned earlier, Mr. Dunn and Mr. Uh, Machewski and Mr. Wittett, those guys went to Scholard Hall at the tail end of when it was all guys. Um, and I think it switched for the, in 1985 when they, when they changed, when they combined the schools together. Um, so I missed that era. I, you mentioned earlier, I started high school in 1998, 1998, mm. you know, we had the new building uh, built in 1992, 93-ish the auditorium um, and uh, Mr. Hool, who was the legendary principal here. He taught my dad math and he was a principal here for the longest time. Um, and, uh, and just a great man. He, uh, he retired when I was in grade eight. So I never got to be under his um, direction, but uh, always kind of saw him at mass at, at church and was honored to kind of shake his hand that, you know, at the, the peace of Christ and, and just, uh, you know, lots of, uh, I just, I, I've always been proud to be a part of the history and, uh, and, and, and proud that I know a lot of the history, you know, um, we celebrate, uh, Father Mike and Derry in the fall with Mr. Pride's, uh, ceremony. And, um, and that means a lot. And I didn't know he, he, uh, he, you know, was uh, killed in the car accident. Um, and I was, uh, you know, just, a like a baby when that happened. And, uh, and so it's nice to kind of honor, all of these people that have kind of paved the way for, for you and I and everyone that's still mm. here, you know, um, uh, I always want to know, um, what you guys think about the history when you come here, what, what does it make you feel like when you, when you walk on those old stairs that are all kind of like bent on the corner because they've been walked on? Like, what, what do you think about when you came here in grade nine? Like, what did you guys think about this massive building, you know, or, or the, or the history, you know? I know my experience was a little different because I'm a year older than you are. So I came in right mid pandemic. Uh, so I was uh, an octomester grade nine. Right. So what do you think? Because it was a bit more normal by the time you got here. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it didn't, in grade nine, I was still kind of new to the school. So I didn't really understand the history of it. But then when everything kind of got normal in grade 10, pretty much for me, right. then I started to understand. And then we had more ceremonies, alumni day, that kind of thing. I started to right. understand it a bit more. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's a it's a real shame. I always feel for the students that were um either ending high school during uh the pandemic or or starting it because it, it just uh it really wasn't the true experience. Um but uh I mean that's you know, we're lucky that we yeah. survived and um and uh but yeah, no, definitely not not the uh not the ideal setting for anyone in the world that had to go through um any kind of education really during during the pandemic. The SHH Bears Esports Rocket League team is going to be playing a total of 12 matches in April against other high schools in Canada to compete to be the best high school Rocket League players in North America. They play three sets of games every Wednesday. Game one is at 6 p.m. Game two at 6.30. And game three is at seven. They will play a best of five for each match. To stream the games, go to the SHH Instagram for the YouTube link or go straight to the eSports website. When we think of you, we think of a teacher that bleeds green and gold. What drives you to be so invested in our community at SJSH? Uh, thank you. I do. I do bleed green and gold. Uh, I, uh, I think what I mentioned earlier, just a little bit about the, the traditions here. I think what I, what I love is our culture, and I, uh, I just want to carry that on, and I want, I want uh, to have our students to, to believe in our culture and our traditions and, uh, and start new ones. And I, I just, uh, with my family history, my siblings and my parents and my aunts and uncles that have all come here before me and all of my friends, I, uh, and all the good times that we had in high school, I just want to continue, uh, our legacy. And, uh, and I just, I, I, I want us to, 
uh, work hard and uh, and I want us to to work at you know being the best that we can and reaching our potential. And I think one of the things that that you know with teaching music is that that I see and you know anyone that you that ever talked to that taught music, you know we see the potential in everyone and uh, and we see the uh, the vulnerability and the, the humility that it takes to start an instrument and how embarrassing it can be when you're really bad, right? And, and, and students will say, I'm really bad at that part. And I'll say, yeah, you, you are. You're really bad at it. But, but you're only bad at that right now. You're, you're only really bad right now. And I think um, one thing that you're, unfortunately, uh, but fortunately, your generation and the students that we have here and the future students, uh, you have been exposed to the best technology in the history of the world. And with that, everything is now instant. And we have our phones, like I have one right right here. Um, and we are addicted to the phones and the, we all are, it's a thing. Uh, but if you want to get a hold of someone, it's instant. If you want to find a song that you like, it's instant. If you want to know anything ever, it's instantly uh, given to you. It, it, we have the information at our fingertips. So, uh, despite all the advantages and all of the, um, you know, good things that that has brought to our world, and it, and it has, uh, the flip side, one of the one of the negative flip sides to that is that we uh, have lost all of our patience. Mm -hmm. We have no patience mm -hmm. for anything, and so I think, you know, when someone sees uh, a performance by anyone, whether it be athletics or the arts or whatever, and they say, "Oh my gosh, you're so talented." You are so talented. I could, I could never do that. As a music teacher, or as an arts teacher, our response is always, it's work. It's practice, mm -hmm. right? It, 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 no one came out of the womb with a uh, guitar in their hands, with a bass guitar in their hands, yeah, right? Like, right. Uh, <laughs> shout out to bass guitars. You know, no, no one came out like that. And, and, and uh, if anybody does anything well, it's because they have put time into it. And, and so with everything being instant, it's hard for me to sit down with a student in grade nine and say, well, get that clarinet out, you know? And, and they say, well, it squeaks and it sounds so bad. And then, you know, the parents will call me and say the dog keeps howling because they play the clarinet at home, and, right? And I find that entertaining. But uh, I, I feel like, you know, it is a result of that. And I think we just really need to get back uh, to the basics in our culture of, yes, we can get things quickly, but to do anything well, we have to commit the time, you know? Mm. And because there almost is that lack of passion, I think that's what makes you so admirable because you continue to push that passion onto your students and you keep that going in the school despite kind of a lack of that through the technology and the constant overload of information. Thank you. You're absolutely right. It is a, it is a grind to, to, keep, uh, to keep the motivation up. And, uh, you know, because I, I, will, I will preach and say, you know, you got to be patient. You're a generation. You have no patience, you know. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I'm on the phone with, you know, uh, you know, a telemarketer <laughs> or, a, or a, you know, a call center, you know, and I'm like, how come they, how come they're taking so long? You know, I, yeah. I, I'm exactly the same way, I promise you. But when I'm here, it's my job to be patient. It really yeah. is. Um, uh, but no, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a, it's a, it's a worldwide thing, but uh, just remind ourselves that um, we can get there. You know, we can really get there if we, if we commit to it, if we're passionate about it, and mm -hmm. if we love it, right? Yeah, 100%. The music program at our school is very impressive. What motivates you to create such an amazing, amazing music program here? Thank you. Yeah, I, I would say the biggest thing, if I can say uh, three words, uh, they would be, why can't we? Question mark. Why can't we? And I think growing up in North Bay, a lot of people will, um, you know, negatively mention the gaps between Northern Ontario and Southern Ontario mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, the education shouldn't be one of them. And it, it, it isn't one of them, to be honest. Uh, but I would say what motivates me with the music program are those questions, why, is that question, why can't we? Why can't we have what everyone else has or what other people have, what other programs have? So uh, with that motivation, I, you know, I, I, you mentioned earlier our marching band. I absolutely love uh, American college football. Americans do a lot of things wrong, right? Mm -hmm. But they do... A lot of things right, and, and athletics is one of them. Marching bands is one of them. Thanksgiving is one of them. Imagine <laughs> Thursday off, wow. Um, 
November too. But I, I love, yeah, I love the school spirit of of that, and the marching band is a big part of that. I love University of Notre Dame Fighting Irish, uh, and uh, I always, I, I thought, you know, if I get to teach music, I want to start a marching band, and I wanted to do it. I want to, I want to play at those kind of games. Um, all of the, it's, it's a huge part of American culture. Our high school marching bands. And I thought, mm-hmm. it, why can't we have that too? Um, very brief story. Uh, when I said that I wanted to start a marching band, um, I got a few Snickers and last, oh my gosh, what are you going to, you know, it's, it's very expensive to do it. And, um, there's a bit of a Cinderella story here is that I wanted to do it. And, um, Mr. Dunn came to me and, uh, his dad sat on something called the Scholar Hall Foundation. The Scholar Hall Foundation, uh, invested, um, money back from when it was run by the resurrectionist priests. Uh, they invested money um, that they had sold uh, properties and uh, around the field and uh, did a really good job over the years at at um, at keeping the investment smart and and making money uh, on the investment. Uh, and for a lot of years, they had given out scholarships and bursaries from the Scholar Hall Foundation. And so students would apply for these scholarships and bursaries and they gave out a lot of money. Like a lot, a lot of us, we would get when you graduated or left grade 13, if you're going to university and college, um, if you applied, uh, they would get like a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars to a lot of people and $500 and, um, and really good, um, you know, investing back in the students. Uh, Mr. Don came to me and said, I want you to write a letter to Mr. Houle, Mr. Houle. Uh, was also on the uh, the Scholar Hall Foundation with uh, with Mr. Cliff Dunn, and um, and they said, "What uh, what do you want? What do you need?" Because we didn't have any drums, we didn't have any um, uniforms or or you know anything for marching. And uh, I wrote them a letter and told them what I wanted to do. And uh, and I think uh, my letter hopefully portrayed how passionate I am about this place and, and, and how passionate I, uh, they, they are about this place. And, and they, they wrote me a check and bought all of our drums and it was just like a dream come true. Uh, and, um, and we, those are the drums we play on now in our, in our marching band. Mm -hmm. Uh, another quick Cinderella story to the marching band is that same year when I first started teaching, uh, we didn't have uniforms. Our first alumni day, the marching band wore uh, rain pants, uh, gold, yellow rain pants, and uh, hard hats that we still have actually, and old um, Scholar Hall um, choir blazers, the uh, green blazers. And so we, we marched out and we didn't really know how to march. And we had these brand new drums that came in the week before Alumni Day. And it was just like a real rush. And um, there's actually a website called marchinglinks.com. It's kind of like a classifieds or Kijiji page for American marching bands. Somewhat upon that, and I looked um, at the uh, at the, the website, and there just so happened to be a school out of Indiana, Syracuse, Indiana, that had uh, the colors green and gold, and they had the exact same. Uh, it, it was, they had our uniforms, and so I um, I emailed the guy, and he said um, for for twenty dollars each, you can get this because new uniforms are like you know thousands of dollars. Like I mean, for one uniform, it would be over a thousand dollars for one person to get it. And, um, I, they sent me 150 of them and, uh, they were, they were 20 bucks each. And so we got a, a smoking hot deal, uh, on those. It was just, I totally believe that was, you know, just, just, uh, meant to be. And, um, got the uniforms and, and my grandma, uh, and my mom and, uh, Mrs. Overholt, uh, my wife also, uh, they, they took out the stitching of the old, um, school, and uh, we put our patches, our um, crest, our school crest on them. And the hats actually had uh, these American eagles with guns, uh, with rifles. Oh <laughs> and I thought that's like not what we want to um, project. So we, we pulled off all those metal parts. Um, Mr. Chidinelli uh, was actually in the marching band then. He was in grade 11. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, Mrs. Cipperoni was, was part of it later on. But we pulled all those off. We put those bears patches on top. So... Um, yeah, just uh, I, I just I feel like it was such a fortunate and lucky uh, a to be able to to teach here and and b just to be able to get that going uh, and uh, have a team of people rooting for me, uh, my fam- my family and and staff members here that just everyone pitched in a, a hand and um, and we really got it going and and loud and proud you know marching in our in our colors. Mm-hmm. Would the marching band be what you're most proud of out of the music program here? I, I would say I I am proud of the music program in in a lot of ways. Number one, I'm proud to carry on the traditions from Mr. Kennedy and Mrs. Foisy when I was here. Miss Zapala was was uh, involved back then as well. Um, I am proud. Um, I I would say that I am proud that we offer 
everything that any other music program in the province offers. I'm proud that we have our, our marching band and we probably have our drum line. I'm proud that we have our Caribbean steel drum orchestra. Um, Mrs. Overholt and I went to Jamaica for our honeymoon and I fell in love with steel pans and we, and, and we were able to, to get those with Mr. Uh, Belanger, Mr. Batanti uh, back in the day. Uh, and uh, so I'm proud, I'm proud of all that. I'm proud of our guitar students that aren't into the, the, those necessary, those traditional band programs, but they still want to rock and they come and take guitar and, and we jam and, and play with those. Um, and I'm proud of our musical theater program. Uh, I, you know, as we know, there are summer, there are summer musical theater programs in North Bay, Tauros and, and Summer Challenge, of course. There's a whole history of those programs as well that, that I won't get into, but um, the success of those programs has been the amount of time to put in, the amount of effort that they put in. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's done daily. They practice, you know, either all day or, or all night um, in the summertime. And so I said, you know, I'd like to offer that as a part of our semester because to do a musical theater production after school is, is extremely difficult. You don't have the mm-hmm. time. And everyone's busy and uh, and it's, it's difficult to get uh, the amount of hours in required to put on a good produ- a good full production after school and so um, I, I approached uh, some colleagues and and um, I had to um, I think I had to write a letter to our school board administration and just mention what we were trying to do because it, it is a multi-period multi-teacher it's a lot of um, a lot of uh, coordinating to get that going. Mr. Marietti was very helpful with the timetable to get that going. And, and, and now it's, it's, it was our sixth year this year. And, uh, the shows we, you know, we do the full version. We don't do the student version or the junior version. We do the real shows and, and we get all the, uh, musicians in North Bay, the adults that play. Those are real, those are real Broadway scores. Those are real, mm-hmm. the real shows that would come through with Mervish and Toronto. And, and they're, uh, yeah, it's, it's a huge undertaking. Um, as we have gone on, it's, it's gotten, uh, you know, bigger and bigger and, and better and better. And, uh, we just, we want to keep going that we get super motivated by, uh, by each other. And, you know, Mr. Carr, Mr. Pride, Miss Vinecourt and myself, and, and just, we want to get to work on those things. And, uh, and so, yeah, so I would say the music program of the musical theater program of the arts program, I am just proud that we are all, um, working towards, um, arts education and that we offer everything here because, um, Again, those words. Why can't we? Why can't we just be just as good? And we are just as good. And, and uh, any student, I believe, I believe any student worldwide, any student in the province, whether it's Northern Ontario, Southern Ontario, from any background, we have the opportunity if they put in the work. And uh, and 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 those that do really succeed. And uh, and it, that's that's at the end of the day, the the student success is the is the reward. And it's uh, it is. Uh, it's, it's a real joy to be a part of and uh, and seeing the magic happen. Mm-hmm. Why would you recommend that students get involved with extracurriculars? Well, the thing about um, high school is that it flies by. Okay. And you mentioned earlier uh, that I went here from 1998 to 2003. That's five years. But I didn't return for a victory lap. We actually had five years and I was the, I was actually the last. My grade was the last year. It had OAC, a color cheer day at MOGA. We were black, right? You know, nines are yellow and tens are green and 11s red, 12s blue. We were black. And so our logo on our t-shirt, I still have the t-shirt uh, and it still fits. Uh, it's uh, our logo was the ACDC font uh, and their album back in black. And we changed it to last in black through the last uh, OAC grade ever. And it was a great year. It was, it was, it was outstanding. Um, but um but so we had five years. I had five years. I actually played in the band here in grade eight for a little bit when I played saxophone. So I had, I had kind of six years in our culture. And before that, my family, I just loved it. Um, there is something magical in this building after school mm-hmm. and in the evening. When you were here at night, it's exciting. And I felt it as a student and I feel as an adult, as a teacher here. I come in at night because all of the people that are here with you are like-minded individuals. They are passionate. And so if you are on a team here and you have a 7 p.m. practice, everyone shows up and they have a common goal. If we have a practice for musical theater or a band performance or, or whatever it is, when you are here at night, there's just, there is a, there is a focus about it and there is a, uh, there is just something, um, that I can't really even put into words. I know I'm a, I'm a, I'm a chatty individual, but I, I honestly, I can't, I can't put into words what the feeling is, but it's just, it's excitement. And, uh, and so it's very easy to go home on the bus every day. 
it's very easy to put, you know, do your classes and, and go home. And uh, I just, I, I am always, always talking to our grade eights coming in saying, don't be that person. Don't, don't let it fly by. Uh, because you can turn back in grade 11 and say, oh, I wish I would have done something or I wish I would have tried this. And, and, and not just for athletes or not just for teams, because I know that it's hard to make teams. Like, um, but uh, with anything, you know, you guys with, with, uh, with a podcast, um, in my time too, I've seen students approach teachers and say, can we start this club? Um, a lot of guitar students, uh, you know, a couple of years ago would go to Mr. Foles and Mr. Tidinelli and say, uh, Mr. Fran Tidinelli, uh, and say, you know, can we, can we jam? And then they had a guitar club going, you know, so it's just, again, just like anything else, the, the, the interest and the waves go in cycles. And, um, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, I would just, I would say to anyone, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's just a great place to be after school. And, uh, and it really, it makes you feel even more like a bear. And I know that our sports teams, we, we are, our mascot are bears and we're, we are bears. But um, you mentioned the colors before. You bleed green and gold. My favorite are green and gold days, right? I don't even wear the, the, the suit all the time. I wear this for band things. But, you know, green and gold days are awesome. It's not just because I love the colors. but It's because we are all part of a team. We are all part of the team. And there's, and there's a common, common goal uh, together. And, uh, you know, alumni day is my favorite day of the year because it's the beginning of the year. Everyone's fresh. Everyone's excited. We come in here, we get our green and gold on, we all get excused for the football game. And it's, it's, it's a cultural event, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and I think that we might not even as students, you might not even know it, but you're going to look back and say, Oh my gosh, like that was so cool that we just, we were all part of something together. And, uh, and we appreciate it now more post post COVID, but, uh, but just in general, um, I've had, I've had students come back and say, you know, I went to university and I went to like, we had a homecoming and there was a football game and there was like, there was no band and like, what's going on? Like, how come, you know? And, and so we were proud that we offered that experience here before they even went to, to university. So, um, yeah, I just, uh, I can't say enough good things about, you know, meeting new friends. It, it, that's just a, an added bonus, right? But mm -hmm. but just being passionate about something and, and being here without classes. Uh, um, there was a show that I watched that a lot of my generation watched growing up called Saved by the Bell. I'm a big fan. I used to travel with friends of mine, Mr. Orlando's car to Mount Antoine. We do Saved by the Bell trivia um, with, uh, with everyone in the car. And... Uh, Stay by the Bell, Zach Morris is the lead character. And uh, and he said a, a quote at the end of one of the episodes. I'm not sure what season or whatever. Uh, but he said, I love school. It's too bad classes get in the way. And I, and I think, you know, we have to go to classes. We have to, you know, the academics here. I've always, we always had high standards here at SJSH with, with academics. Uh, but, um, but being involved, that's, that's the real, that's the real time, you know. And, and, uh, and you know, I never wanted to miss school. Uh, I was involved in student council here for three years. I was on the executive and um, I, I never wanted to miss out on an event. And, and, uh, and we had, uh, we had high school dances back then. And that was a big, a big uh, fundraiser for us, but also just a good time. And uh, for, you know, a lot of reasons, they don't do them anymore, uh, anywhere, but, uh, but, you know, it was just, uh, it was just, I, I think in general, I feel uh, responsible to promote involvement because I had such a, a rich experience and uh, I know everyone has different experiences but uh, you know I just wish that everyone could could uh, could get involved to even have a, a snippet of, of what it's like to um, to be a part of it. The Bears concert band, jazz band, drumline, vocal ensemble and solos are going to be performing in Kiwanis on April 16th and 17th. Make sure to wish them good luck. Okay, so these questions are rapid fire, which means you can answer them in a word or a sentence. Um, you can explain if you want to, but you don't have to. And then you can also ask us okay. questions. All right. So to start, what are three things you cannot live without? Oh my gosh. Uh, number one, uh, I would say that I can't live without music. I gotta, I gotta hear some songs. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, I cannot live without uh, being able to watch sports. I, as much as I'm an arts person, I really like watching the. Uh, um, college football and, and, uh, and hockey and baseball. Uh, and the third thing I could not live without 
uh, the without something to look forward to, right? I look forward to um, summer every year. I look forward to you know family events. So I think um, I'm always looking ahead to what's coming up, and I, I think that really keeps me keeps me going. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What's your biggest pet peeve? Uh, the biggest pet peeve would be uh, burnt popcorn. I love yeah. popcorn, and uh, when it burns, it's just so insulting. Uh, you know, it smells the whole. If you make it at home, it smells the whole house up. Yeah, uh, and it's just like gross to taste, and that uh, just uh, ruins such a good thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is your go-to karaoke song? My go-to karaoke. My brother is a huge karaoke guy. Uh, I am not so much of a huge karaoke guy, but if when I have done it, when I do do it, uh, I would say mine would be um, "Total Eclipse of the Heart." Would be mine. <laughs> mine to go. Yeah. Interesting. Uh-huh. Yep. Can we get like a snippet? Or? Oh, no, no, no. No, it's in a different city. What is one of your guilty pleasures? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I would say one of my guilty pleasures would be uh, Twizzlers Pull and Peel. Uh, I just like it. It sounds like a kid thing, but uh, I shouldn't say that. No, I, I can't change it. Yeah, go for mm-hmm. it. Okay. Yeah. Slushies. Okay. Mm-hmm. And everyone yes. makes fun of me. Like I love a slushy. Like when Leonard started serving slushy in the cafeteria, I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, but if I go somewhere and there's an option of a slushy, like we'll go to Dairy Queen and people will get ice cream, I'll get the slushy. Yeah. 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 I'll I'll try the oh, yeah. occasional ice cream too. But you guys tell me right now, what is it? Guilty pledge. I gotta say slushy too, because that oh cafeteria gosh. takes all my money. All my chickens. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take my money. What about you? Are we talking food? Sure. Or everything. Or anything. Um, anything. Anything? Probably video games. Ooh. I play them a bit too much, especially on the weekends. You're not the only one, though. I feel like everyone plays video games constantly. Now. I don't, actually. Okay. Well, yeah. I read too many one. books. I don't have time. <laughs> Good for you. And last, what is your favorite food? I got to be honest. I just love a steak. Love a steak and potatoes and a glass of red non-alcoholic wine. Which is not true. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, definitely. I don't know. I just uh, learned how to barbecue years ago. And I, uh, I just love perfecting a nice, uh, a nice steak if I can, if I can get one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as we conclude, we want a piece of sage wisdom for ourselves and for our mm-hmm. viewers. Uh, okay. I would say uh, we mentioned earlier just about, um, about work. And so the, the, the quote would be, uh, when times get hard, we work harder. And I try and uh, tell my own sons, I have two sons uh, that Liam and Owen that, that all the time. Um, and uh, I would say, uh, I would just say that it works for everybody. You know, it, it, things are going to be, nothing ever is, is perfect in anything in, in, in life, in music, in, in school. Um, and you're going to have times that you're really frustrated and, and it's going to be hard and it's not all, you know, roses. But, um, you know, what do you do? How do you respond? Right. Uh, we can't quit. We're not going to quit. Right? You're already passionate. You already love something that you're doing. And, mm-hmm. and the best thing to do is just to keep working hard. And I want, I want to say also to you before we really wrap it up and kind of, because uh, I know you want to, you want to wrap it up now, but I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to, to speak today because um, we don't often get to sit down in a, in a formal, I mean, it's been an informal, but in a, in a, in an official way. And, yeah. um, and I, uh, I just, I, I like to be able to talk about um, my passions and, our school is is uh, is right up there uh, in my passions, and and I, I just love I love this place, and and I think it's so important um, that everyone um, know that, and and it's I just appreciate the opportunity to be able to share that because uh, I think it's important um, moving forward that that we know um, you know we are, we are a part of a team, and uh, and I'm all in for this place. Yeah, for sure. thank you so much for coming yeah, to you. speak with us. This has been amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to say that. I think regardless of what role we all play in the school community, I think all of us, like on graduation day, we all have to agree that you make the high school experience, whether oh, we are in the music program or, you know, athletes or if you're on podcast or whatever you do, everyone knows you as that person where it's like, oh yeah, I got to go see Mr. Oh, Arnold. that's very yeah. nice. I look for, and please come, please come and see oh, me. Come 100%. back and see us too. Uh, I also want to say something to everybody that's not in the arts programs that I don't know. Um, 
years ago, I got into a, a disagreement with with a fellow staff member about morning announcements because they were complaining about at times announcements go long and they wanted to start their lessons and mm-hmm. and fair enough. But uh, mentioned something about you know they announce all the names of who scored and who what place they were in and all these kinds of things and and I I disagreed. I said I said I. I want to hear those things because I, I can't make every event and I can't go to every game. And uh, as my family life has gotten busier with, with kids and everything too, I really want to know who, 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 who are a part of these things. I want to know the successes of our students. And when I see them in the hallway, I want to say congratulations. And when a student leaves my class to go be excused for a game or a tournament, I want to say go Bears. Uh, I am so pumped that, that they are involved and that they're doing these kinds of things and, and everyone should be doing it. Um, and I, you know, I just, I want it to be, um, a situation where we just keep supporting one another and to all of those people out there, if you work at a place in North Bay and I come into that place and I don't say hi, it's not because I'm trying to be rude. I just, I can't, I don't know, you know, 1200 students or, or whatever we have here now. And, and I, that's honestly, it breaks my heart, uh, cause Mrs. Overholt will say, Hey, they go to our school and then, and then we'll say hello. But there's times I'm sure that I walk by people in the mall or I walk by people in stores and uh, and I don't say hello. And I just want you to know that it's not because uh, I don't love you. <laughs> it's not because <laughs> I don't love this place. I just I, I, I just don't know everybody. But I, I really wish I could know everyone because I think everyone has something to offer and I think everyone has a potential uh, to contribute to our community. So just just know that uh, whether I say hello to you or not, that I'm proud of you and I'm proud of that you're a bear and, and that uh, that I, I want you to be uh you know, to, to be a, to be a great bear, to be a good person. Made me emotional there. <laughs> so once it again, it bothers me when I don't yeah. know people. Yeah. 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 Once again, yeah, big thank, thank you. you. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Okay, you guys were great. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So this concludes our third episode with Mr. Overholtz. <laughs> next, episode see three. you guys next time. Our viewers, I hope you enjoyed our episode yeah. on the Bears Den podcast, where we highlight the journey of how cubs become bears. Till next time, roll bears! Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube at SJSH Bears Den Podcasts.